Hi there, this is Pastor Ishola here and Doris Famelusi, and welcome to the YouTube channel of Rock Church, where you'll find engaging contents that would uplift your spirit. And whilst you're here, remember, turn on your notification, leave a comment for us, subscribe to our channel, and share this broadcast if it's a blessing. God bless you. Let's put our hands together one more time for the Lord as we take our seats this morning because indeed the atmosphere has shifted. It is not about to shift, it has shifted. So look at your neighbor, tell them your atmosphere has shifted. Oh, you're not saying it like confident people this morning. Come on, say, say your atmosphere has shifted. Hallelujah. It's a shift in atmosphere this morning. A shift in atmosphere. Father, we thank you. And we honor you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. How many of you are ready for the word this morning? Ready for the word? Only five people are ready for the word. All right, so maybe I should just pay my attention to those five that raised up their hands. You guys on this side, you're still waking up, right? Not ready for the word? But in the name of Jesus, you are ready for the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because the entrance of your word, it brings light and understanding to the simple. And Father, we approach your word with humility. Lord, we know we're going to live with understanding. We're going to live with revelation. We're going to live with insights that would help us to live that life of a winner. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you because... Through the entrance of your word, Satan is defeated again. Satan is put to shame all over again. In the name of Jesus. Every situation melts at the entrance of your word. Every circumstance melts at the entrance of your word. And so, Father, let your word be strong in our spirits this morning. Let it be strong and settled in our hearts, knowing that in your word is your voice. And wherever your voice appears, everything bows. Father, we thank you. Because every situation bows this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I ask that you anoint my lips of clay, that I may speak your word, that I may declare the, your mind and glorify the name of your son Jesus alone. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, at the end of, the, of it all, Lord, your name alone is glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. If you love the presence of God, come on, give him a round of applause this morning. If you love God's presence. <clears throat> Glory to Jesus. So this morning I'm going to be sharing briefly in the next 30 minutes on what I've titled a faith and positive approach to embracing spiritual reformation. A faith and positive approach to embracing spiritual reformation. Hallelujah. We've heard lots of teachings on how to or what is required. Stay away from sin. Embrace righteousness allow the Holy Spirit. And so we've heard all of that. And those messages could have scared some of you like, Lord, how am I going to do it? I have this weakness. I have this thing that keeps holding me down or that keeps propping, up, you know, propping its ugly head up. And uh, uh, I find myself failing sometimes. Lord, how do I do this? I mean, Pastor James preached very strongly on Friday that if Jesus was without sin, then you can be without sin. Amen. And that's a very sure word. Glory to God. Because if the same spirit that raised up Jesus dwells in you, the Bible says that same spirit will quicken your mortal bodies. So it will quicken you, to, quicken you to a place where, you know, you get to a point where if Jesus was without, then I can also be without. Satan can come in me and find nothing. Just like he came to Jesus and found nothing. Glory to Jesus. You know, a lot of times we say we're work in progress. True, we're work in progress, but then don't stay in, don't, oh, I don't know if I said, don't, don't stay on that same spot. So let it be that your life this year is more valuable than how it was last year. Challenge yourself that what got me down this year will not get me down next year. That by the end of this year, I'm overcoming what I could not overcome by the start of this year. That's how you know the Spirit of God is working in you. And it's constantly and it's, uh, 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 moving you steadily towards that place where you're fully conformed to the image of Christ. I believe that before we step out of this life into the next, God granting us long longevity, I believe that we can get to a season in our lives where we can say, yes, we have run the race, we've got there. 
we have seen work, you know, we, we live lives that, you know, you can look around and, you know, you don't have to be kneeling every morning and say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. We, got, we have to get to that place. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. Where the sin that God can, or the things that, 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 that God will hold against you are not the sins of lying, stealing, whatever. It may be that, okay, normally you pray two hours, you prayed one hour. Then God sees that as, no, no, you've, you've under, underperformed today. And so God is offended. That. Let that be the kind of sin that God is holding up against you. Let it not be the sin of compromise. Hallelujah. Let it not be the sin of cheating and stealing. Let it not be the sin of adultery and fornication. Let it not be the sin of lust. Glory to Jesus. Let it be things that are working on improving your fellowship in the spirit with the Lord. That God knows oh, in this. If Job could say, I do not set my eyes twice on a maid under the old covenant. How much were we under the new covenant? Come on, say with me, I've been set free. By the power of Christ. So, you may be scared, Lord, but how do I do it? What's going on? How do I? I want to begin to show you this morning that you can have a faith and positive approach to embracing spiritual reformation. And I want to start by saying to you that your understanding and comprehension of what God thinks of you will determine how you see yourself. It starts with how you see yourself. Look at your neighbor. Tell them it starts with how you see yourself. Oh, come on. Say like you mean. Say it starts with how I see myself. How you see yourself determines how you position yourself. I see myself as a righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So there are places where by intention you would never catch me. Glory to God. Do you understand? There are places where by default, by my thinking of righteousness, you would never find me. Glory to God. Why? Because I see myself as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you see yourself as a loser, you would always be walking into losing situations. But if you truly see yourself as a winner, where you've, you've said it, you've maintained it, you've said it, you've meditated on it, and you're settled in it, there are some places that will not even cross your mind to go into. Glory to God. I said glory to God. But it starts with how you understand and are able to comprehend what God thinks of you. Because what God thinks of you is how you see yourself. So the challenge then is how do I understand God rightly? You must understand God right. And I want to submit to you this morning that God is not a killer, he's a healer. He's not a way blocker, he's a way maker. He's not a killer of dreams, he's a giver of dreams. He's not the one who keeps in bondage. He's the one who delivers from bondage. He's not the one who deceives. He is the one who directs. So you must have a proper understanding of who God is. When you understand who God is, then you understand what he thinks about you. And I want to take this uh, morning's reading from the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. And that's where Paul began to talk about what he thinks about himself in line with what he knows that God thinks about him. And so Paul could stand in a place and declare rightly what he knows and thinks about himself. Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. He says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. In that one sentence, there are three key things that Paul clarifies about himself. First, he calls himself a servant of Jesus Christ. Second, he says he is called to be an apostle. 
And then third, he declares he is separated unto the gospel of God. Can you take Paul's name out and put your name there? And say, Shola, a servant of Jesus Christ. James, a servant of Jesus Christ. Called to be an apostle. And separated unto the gospel of God. See, when you begin to understand what God has said about you, and you begin to understand what God thinks about you, you can make bold statements like this. This statement should be the model of every believer. Every believer is a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So say with me, I am a minister of the gospel. Right, are you born again? Of course. So if you're born again, then you're a minister of the gospel. Come on, say it again. Say, I am a minister of the gospel. <laughs> say one more time. Say, I am a minister of the gospel. <laughs> so every believer in Christ Jesus is a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus. No believer in Jesus Christ is less called than another. I am no less called as a pastor of this congregation than an usher who's called into the place of ushering in this congregation. There's no lesser calling. There's no greater calling. Because each calling has its dutiful reward as far as God is concerned. Each calling has its place in the kingdom. If there were no ushers, everything would be chaotic. Glory to God. I said glory to God. If there were no pastors, there would be no counseling. If there were no teachers of the gospel, there will be, or, or the word of God, there will be no grounding in the truth of the word of God. If there were no prophets, there will be no, thus saith the Lord. Direction. Hallelujah. Every call has its place. If there was no place of worship with, with music, you know, uh, some people were saying, you know, some people underestimate the value of worshiping God in songs. Not knowing that that's what they've been prepared to go and do forever and ever in heaven. <laughs> they don't understand it. We're going to join the 24 elders just doing that. There's no assignment in heaven. Who are you, which devil are you going to overcome in heaven? Which prosperity are you seeking for in heaven? That's the height of prosperity. So when you get to heaven, your duty, he says the whole duty of man is to worship God. So we're going to step into another level of worshiping, but we're having a foretaste here on earth. Why? Because God is preparing us through the world. So don't worry you that when you sing on key F, the keyboard is trying to find where your key is. When you get to heaven, that voice will be perfected. Glory to God. You suddenly have what you call an angelic voice. But bless God for those who have it right here and are able to lead us. Some people on the radio said when Jesus was walking on the face of the earth, they, 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 they were not singing any song. It was one place that he sang a hymn. I said, and I said, well, Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Who is he going to be worshipping? <laughs> Himself? Jesus came for an assignment. And he did his assignment. He didn't come to show us how to sing. He came to redeem you and I back to the Father. But he sent some people ahead of time, like David, to show us what music and instruments can do. Hallelujah. And all the harp and all the musical instruments. And he said in his words, he said, praise the Lord with every kind of instrument that you can find or lay your hands on. If you believe that, say Amen. And so every calling in God is equally valuable in God's eyes. And no believer has any excuse not to respond rightly to the call of God in their life. Come and say, I have no excuse. <clears throat> Come and say it again, say, I have no excuse. Have no excuse. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to 21 says, Therefore, if any man, not any pastor, not any evangelist, says, if any man, in other words, anyone, and that includes me. Come and say, that includes me. It says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And now, verse 18, 
all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus. And not only has he done that, he says, and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Come and say, I have a ministry. Oh, come and say it again. Say, I have a ministry. Glory to God. And what's that ministry? The ministry of reconciliation. It can be interpreted in diverse ways according to the giftings of God in your life. But whatever God has gifted you with is to bring reconciliation. So if you're part of a group, you're bringing and you're contributing your quota, you're bringing reconciliation. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So every man has a ministry. And I'm not talking about, uh, you know, that every man, you know, you know, these days we have, <laughs> you know, people that because they can teach the word or share the word, and all of a sudden they think they're called to go and pastor a church. Then they go somewhere, one corner somewhere, and then start a church. And then no wonder there's lots of extremism and abuses today in the church. Why? Because some people are pastoring when they have no duty pastoring. Know what you're called to do. Because they think pastoring is all about glamour. And then they do some drama and abracadabra on TV. And then eventually they line up people to pretend like something, and then they pretend like something, something is going on. If God is not healing today, what am I to come and say you're healed? Amen. Amen. Jesus walked the face of this earth. He didn't heal everybody. Not everybody was healed, but everyone that came to him was healed. Glory to Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is someone getting what I'm saying this morning? So God can decide today in this assembly, all I want to receive is songs of worship. And you come, and there'll be worship all over the place. God can decide next Sunday, I want to heal everyone. Hallelujah. It is as the Spirit moves. We don't dictate to God what He has to do. God tells us what to do. So he says, he's committed to us the word of reconciliation. He says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Come and say, I'm an ambassador of Christ. He says, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Glory to Jesus. So I am a minister of the gospel. You are a minister of the gospel. I am a minister of reconciliation. You are a minister of reconciliation. And whichever way God wants to interpret that in your spirit, it could be while you're ushering right there, the person you're smiling and shaking their hands and welcoming to a seat could be deliverance for that person at that time. Glory to God. It could be during the worship in the ministration and songs that someone got their breakthrough. How many of you got your breakthroughs this morning? Just from the worship. That if we just said, let's share the grace and go home, you know you received something today. Hallelujah. And it could be right in the word that someone is receiving their deliverance right now. God puts all the components together and he makes it wholesome for you. So that you go out enriched. You go out st steady and stabilized in the things of God. So as I begin to round up, I want to look at those three key things that you are. According to Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, Paul, a servant. So next time you're reading that verse, put your name there. Maybe that would help to put it in perspective. Because the word of God is written for you. It is written for you. So that you can personalize whatever you're reading. So put your name there. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of Jesus Christ. So number one, as a servant. A servant, or to be a servant means to be under the lordship of another. It means to be a slave to another. It also means to be under the full authority of another. So you must be fully settled about your place in Christ. You are not the boss of Jesus. Jesus is the boss of you. Tell somebody Jesus is the boss of you. 
Because some of us think that when we're not, we're not born again, have Jesus and God at our, at, their, at our beck and call. So he said, God, do this. You must do this. If you don't do this, I will not. If you don't, glory to Jesus. He is the boss of you. So you are his servant. You are his slave. In fact, Paul went deeper in another place. says, I, Paul, a slave of Jesus Christ. In other words, I have no will of my own. It's only the will of the master Jesus. So you can't want to do anything anyhow without the approval of the master. Have you ever seen a servant just go out and do stuff without the approval of the master? So Paul is saying, I am a servant of the Lord Jesus. I am his servant. I am his slave. He fully owns me. My will is soaked up in his will. No wonder Paul said, in another place he said, I count all things dung. In other words, all things rubbish that I may gain or possess or be possessed by Christ. This means that I must fully clear my mind of all that I think I am or have attained in the natural or in the flesh and give room for the full occupation of Jesus Christ. When we have this understanding that we are servants of the Lord Jesus, it will change your thinking. It will change your perspective. It will change your understanding. It will change your attitude. It will change your behavior and it's going, definitely going to change your actions. And it's going to change how you talk and you respond to things. When you see yourself as a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, when demands are made on you, come on, this is what the Lord has instructed us to do. Let us join forces together. You're not going to be crossing and say, eh, I have one business somewhere. I have this one to do. Oh, no, 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 no. Those are four. You're not going to think as a servant, you respond with promptness. And you say, when, Lord? How, Lord? Where, Lord? Hallelujah. As a servant, my full allegiance is to my Lord and owner, Jesus Christ. Your full allegiance is to your Lord and owner, Jesus Christ. So number one, you see yourself as a servant. Do you know the secret of victory? Jesus said, he that wants to be the greatest, let him be the least. He said, I am among you as one that serves. He said, the Gentiles do lord themselves over them, but not you. He that wants to be what the greatest. If you want to experience the greatest victories in your life, make yourself the least. And simply that's humility because servanthood is humility. Sometimes your servanthood might make you look like you're stupid. You're not stupid. You're, the Bible says he giveth more grace to the humble. The secret of grace to overcome is humility. But the secret of falling is pride. Hallelujah. No matter how anointed you are, when you see great graces operating in the lives of some people, know that that's a measure of their humility. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? So number one, I am a servant. Can you say that boldly? I am a servant. A servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, say one more time. Say, I am a servant. A servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to understand that Paul was method, uh, is, it, is, it, is it methodical, is that the word? In saying these things, when he didn't just put them, he didn't just put them uh, 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 ignorantly or just anyhow. He had intention. So he started first with, with servanthood because as a servant, that's what gives you access into whatever else God has for you. Then he moves on to the word called. It says called to be an apostle. Because your servanthood will help you understand what your calling is. If you're not a servant, you can't understand how, what you've been called into. As far as God is concerned. So it says, called to be what? An apostle. So called to be what? A businessman. Called to be what? A teacher of the word of God. Called to be what? Whatever it is that you're called into. Called into the children's ministry, the worship ministry, whatever it is called. Why? Because it operates from a place of servanthood. So a servant ministers. A servant does not entertain. A servant serves because they minister. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You don't see a calling in God operating and say I, I like that call. You can't like it. You have to be called into it. 
<laughs> you, can't, you can't just like it. Ooh, I like how pastors preach. I like how prophets declare, I want to be a prophet. It don't work like that. It says no one takes this honor unto himself except him that is called, just like Aaron was called. Glory to Jesus. You don't just like it and want to be it. No, you've got to be called into it to be it. Otherwise, you'll be carrying around something you're not graced to carry. And what you can only do is damage. If you're going under a grace that is not yours, you're going to damage. That's where there's damage. When you, wherever you see damage, and then that people, you know, and, and the devil uses that occasion to attack the church, know that that person who's caused that damage is walking in a grace that they've not been graced to walk in. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says called as an apostle. So having the mind of a servant clarifies your calling. Paul was very clear about what he was called to be in Christ, an apostle. What are you called to be? What are you called to be? Very soon, you need to be settling with God rather than say, God, bless me with more houses. Give me more cars. Give me more money. Start asking God, what am I called into? Because what you're called into will bring those things anyhow. <laughs> Are you with me right now? See, the secret of breakthrough is not running after breakthrough. It's pursuing what your purpose in God. That's where breakthrough is. Because God will not indulge in a lack of, in a careless life, unserious life. Then he's not justified. Glory to God. He doesn't just, it's not a Father Christmas, not dashing gifts all over the place. Because he wants to be kind. His loving kindness will find you in your purpose in him. Not out of his purpose. That's why when the prodigal son left purpose, he eventually spent it all. He thought it was settled, but everything disappeared. It went. And it took him coming to himself to return back. If he never came to himself, he would just remain there. Why? Because he ventured out of purpose. He went off track. He moved out of plan. Glory to God. So the reason why so many seem confused and do not know what they are called into may be because you are not fully or totally surrendered to the absolute servanthood in Christ. You still want to be in control of your own life, chasing after your own ambitions outside the will of God for your life. If we're not fully surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, we may never be fully surrendered or we may never fully discover or know what we're called to be in Him. So it takes a full surrendering as a servant to know what I'm called to become. No wonder when He received that vision, He said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. And that's another thing. When God reveals to you what you're called to be, what is your obedience level like? Would you still be playing around? And say like Jeremiah, I am a child. The moment you're called, you're no longer a child. God said to Jeremiah, say not again that I'm a child. Hallelujah. And the way time goes really fast. Do you know that what I could do in my 20s, I can't really do them now. I, I was sharing with someone something. I said, the moment you cross 50, then you begin to know that there's certain things that you need to relax on. <laughs> Apart from those who have been doing some strong things like you know, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> There's someone here who is, who, is, who is almost invincible that you think is 20, but is way above 50. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. How do I know? I know it by experience because I've crossed that threshold. I'm now a senior. Can you imagine? The last time I was called senior was when I was in secondary school, in body house. I was say, senior this, senior that. After that one, no one called me senior again until I crossed 50. Now I'm a senior. Wow. So what I'm trying to say is time flies before you know it. I remember when I celebrated my 40th. I remember when I celebrated my 30th. And all of a sudden, I'm celebrating my 50th. And I've crossed that 50 now. I'm, you know. <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. Those of us in our 50s, we know who we are. <laughs> Amen. So you can't be saying 
that, oh, I'm a child. God said to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, say not that I'm a child. He said, behold, I have put my words in your mouth, and wherever I send you to is who you go. Do not be afraid of their faces, because I will speak through you. Hallelujah. And then number three, as I close, it says separated unto the gospel. Do you know what you're separated unto? It says your calling now informs your level or depth of separation. It also informs what you're separated unto. Paul said he's been separated unto the gospel of Jesus Christ. That was the basis of his apostleship. So his apostolic mission or assignment was to see the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ and establishing ministries as far as God will have him go. His mission became his vision and his life's pursuit. So with Paul, there was no wasting of time. There was no dilly-dallying. There was no confusion. Everything was clear. Why? Because he started with servanthood. Totally surrendered to the Lord. And then it moved into uh, uh, knowing what he was called into. And then from there, he knew what he was separated into or unto. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So what are your confessions today? Because Paul wrote this down. It was as good as Paul saying it. How many of you know your thoughts on paper is as good as your words spoken? Because that's your mind speaking out to you. A lot of times it's not really about even what you say. It's about what's in here. Because if what you're saying is different from what's in here, there's still no change, even though you're saying it. Hallelujah. Because what you're saying has to agree with what's in here. And so Paul was writing based on how convinced he was about his place in Christ Jesus. And so your conviction and words will shape your future and destiny. And was Paul truly an apostle? Yes, he was. Paul was not saying it because he was not functioning in it. He knew that was what he was called to do when he received the call. And he made bold to proclaim it everywhere that he went. Because your life can go or can never go where your mind or your heart, or your mouth has not been. To obtain it, we believe, then speak out what we believe. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24, it says, and Jesus said unto them, have faith in God. Tell your neighbor, have faith in God. It says, for verily I say unto you, that, was so, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So therefore I say unto you, what, so, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. So when you begin to call yourself a servant of the Lord Jesus, called to be an apostle, called to be an usher, called to be a, 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 a worship leader, called to be an evangelist, called to be a teacher, called to be a top pharmacist, called to be a medical doctor, called to because your calling can cover both things in the secular and things in the kingdom. Whatever your calling is, once you've clarified it, it is to glorify his name. Glory to God. Not everybody's going to stand on a pulpit like this and preach. But you have your pulpit in your sphere of calling. That's your pulpit. <laughs> Glory to God. One person once told me, as I ran up now and as I asked us all to get up, one person once told me, he said, oh, pastor, you know, those early days, he said, you're the only one that preaches. You don't even allow anyone else to preach. I said, well, when I make a call for us to go and preach on the high street, do you ever come? He, this person never shows up for evangelism. So I go to the, to the high street. I share. We preach. We bring the people come in. And then you want to come on the pulpit and preach to those that you never were part of bringing into the house in the first place. I told him, start from the high street. Start from there. The, it, the, there are, see the field on the high street. Oh my God. Is it congregation you're looking for? Plenty on the high street. Is it ears to listen to you? Plenty on the high street. I said, brother, if you're not with me on the high street, you can't be with me on the pulpit. It's, it doesn't work. It don't work that way. 
Hallelujah. He, don't work, he doesn't work that way. Why did the disciples, were, why were they the ones to receive the first assignment, the, the first challenge, the first task of spreading the gospel? Why? Because they were with Jesus three and a half years. Even though they were not totally complete, even in their whatever state, it, Jesus still handed the ministry over to them. He didn't go and hand it over to the Pharisees. Say, hey, you are teachers of the law. Oh, you know the word. Oh, you know Moses' law. All right, take, take, take. It's now. No, he handed it over to those who were with him. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I don't even know what book took me in there. Glory to Jesus. Come and rise to your feet this afternoon. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Ripa katala bahande, zete lebo shi karima hande lebo, rapa pa 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 si ke lebo hende, lima sata la brahande. Oh my God, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, begin to bless Him this morning. Begin to bless Him. Come on, lift up those hands. Lift up those hands. It's not time to walk about. It's a time to concentrate. This is the hour that you're going to begin to receive the fruits of the word. Lima shakara bahande. This is a time to establish the fruits of the word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There are five things that I would have wanted us to pray about and really declare. Because by your declarations this morning, you separate yourself from all those stupid things that want to pull you down. When you begin to understand what God thinks about you. But I'm going to go through maybe the first two anyway. So you're going to say with me, say, my life's pursuit is the purpose of Christ for my life. Come on, say with me, I have no other life than the plan of God for my life. Come on, open up your mind and begin to declare that right now. Say, Lord, my life's pursuit, my life's pursuit is your plan. And your goal for my life. Moses said to those people, he said, I would that all God's people were prophets. I would that all of them would prophesy. When they came to tell him, there are some prophesying in the camp, but they've not been ordained to do that. He says, oh, how I would that every one of you are prophets. Let me tell you something. God's plan for you is the best plan that you can follow. That should be your life's pursuit. The plan of God for your life. Uh, open up your mouth and declare that this morning. I have no other life outside the plan of God for my life. I have no other life. I have no other life. It's the plan of God or nothing. It's the plan of God or nothing. It's the plan of God or nothing. That's how serious it is. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. See Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 45 says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Before you came as forth out of the womb, I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. I sanctified you, and I ordained you a singer unto the nations. I sanctified you, and I ordained you uh, an apostle unto the nations. I sanctified you, and I ordained you in the sphere of business unto the nations. You've got to understand that before you were formed, God knew you already. You were not an accident. You were not a mistake. I don't care what your history is like. God knew you were coming. And because he knew you were coming, he knew what he had in mind for you. So your life's pursuit is the purpose of Christ for your life. Number two, say this with me. My life's purpose is uniquely packaged for me and can only be accomplished through me. Say it again. Say my life's purpose is uniquely packaged for me and can only be accomplished through me. Come on, you turn that into prayer this morning. Say, Lord, I submit myself to that unique purpose that's been uniquely packaged for me. 
that can only be accomplished through me. I submit myself to it, Lord. I submit myself to your Lordship. I submit myself to your leading. I submit myself to your spirit. It is unique. It is specific. It is like no other. I will live out my purpose. I will fulfill my agenda, the agenda of God for my life. I will fulfill. I will accomplish in the name of Jesus Christ. Lipa katosh kerebo sita libra hande. Reke ke 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 ke. Liba baba shi karaba hande. Repush karaba sande de de de. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Number three, say this with me. God's purpose for me is patterned after his plan for me. Not after my plan for me. I'll say that again. Say God's purpose for me is patterned after his plan. Not after my plan. Come on, open up your mouth right now. And say, I configure myself. I settle myself into the plan that God has for me. Pattern after your plan. Not my plan, Lord. But your plan. In the name of Jesus. It is your plan that will work out in my life. It is your plan. It is your purpose. It is your plan. It is your plan. It is your plan. It is your plan. In the name of Jesus, I submit myself to the heavenly plan, to the heavenly vision, the heavenly mission. In the name of Jesus, your plan, Lord, not my plan. Your plan, Lord, not my plan. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Two more and we're done. Number four, I have everything I need in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I have what it takes to fulfill my purpose in God. Always in the name of Jesus. Say it again, I have everything I need in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I have what it takes to fulfill my purpose in God. Always in Jesus' name. Come and turn that into prayer right now. I have everything I need and I receive all that I need. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And finally, number five, say this with me. I have been packaged and put together by God in Christ Jesus for prosperity here on earth. Come on, say it again. Say, I have been packaged and put together by God in Christ Jesus for prosperity here on earth. In the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to declare that right now. Say, my life is marked for prosperity. Spirit, soul, and body. My life is marked for prosperity. Spirit, soul, and body. As I fulfill destiny. As I fulfill destiny. It is prosperity. It is prosperity. Spirit, soul, and body. It is prosperity. Rapakatoshke. Prosperity in my life. Prosperity in my home. Prosperity. Prosperity. Rabagadishke. Health is prosperity. Soundness of mind is prosperity. Power of God is prosperity. Living in me. Financial prosperity. Prosperity in every way. In the name of Jesus. Ripakatoshke. Zetele bobobobo. Thank you, Lord. Father, we worship you. In abundance. Jesus has come to give me life in abundance. That is prosperity. And that's what I walk in. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. And I give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Come on, lift up your hands right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you this morning because you are good. We give you all the praise because there's none like you. We adore you, Jesus, because there is a call upon our lives. And Lord, I pray and I decree over your people that everyone will walk according to the call upon their lives in the name of Jesus. That from today, there will be super sensitivity to the purpose of God in every life here in the name of Jesus. That every iota of confusion melts away now in the name of Jesus. 
that your spirit brings clarity into the lives of your people. That your people know and understand that they are called to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And because of that righteousness, they rise above every limitation. They rise above every sin. They rise above every weight that does so easily beset them. In the name of Jesus, that it shall be testimonies of victory, testimonies of overcoming, testimonies of prosperity in the spirit, in their souls, and in their bodies. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you and we bless you this morning. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a round of applause this morning and put those hands together.